the uh, heavies out of a place called Norche, which is uh, on the Togo Benin side. Uh, they were, it's a long story, but they had a king, a, a Kole at the time, who was very vicious at the time. So he was able to bring people out of there. Now, all of the people who live in, in Volta region here and Volta region in Togo, all, not all of them, but most of them, trace, the southern ones trace their lineage so like through, his, through his exodus, right. Yeah, can you Something pronounce like his name again? Togbe Sri. Ewe. So I, what I was trying to do here is give some representation of the major groups in Ghana. But this is Ewe. This is, uh, and some of the others are Ewe too, like I mentioned the uh, Ephraim Mamu, so you'll see some other Ashantis. This was King Take Tawir, probably the most famous uh, Ga King uh, right around the turn of last century. Um, he's got, a, if you go in Accra there, you see a big statue of him too, but he's uh, the one that a lot of the Ga speaking people around will say, you know, he was one of the ones I should have on the wall. The other Ga was uh, Ajete, who I talked to you earlier about, who was, uh, you know, part of the Accra riots, or caused the Accra riots when they didn't get paid by the British. Some of you know Menes, and uh, this is also very important. So the youngsters see, this is what the pharaoh, first pharaohs of the first dynasty look like. And I tell them, I even show them the picture of the statue to let them know, this is just my imagination. This is just the statue. And this is how he is, how it looks right there. And so it's hard for them to imagine because they watch all these Charlton Heston movies, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and then they see this and they, they get, you know, you know. Uh, but the younger you can get them, the more uh, the, the more they understand it. Okay, Cabral. The reason these are big, by the way, the, the four big ones on the outside are those four main uh, Ghanaian, uh, you know, from four. There's more than four groups in Ghana, of course, but I'd say the four most populous groups. And, uh, and then the four in the middle are just my kind of favorites. As, well, I got Garvey and Co. on the front. But, you know, these are just people I think are just extra impactful. That's why... <laughs> They're a little bigger than some of the others you've been seeing. Cabral, of course, is a brilliant philosopher warrior out of Guinea Bissau. Uh, his ability to rally his people on a cultural basis, on a realistic, pragmatic basis, was what really allowed them to knock the Portuguese out. And when they beat the Portuguese, they basically had to withdraw from Angola and Mozambique too. It didn't collapse the Portuguese government. That's when the Portuguese had a revolution because they said we can't fight these people and, and feed ourselves too. So his brilliance was really instrumental in freeing all of Portuguese colonies in Africa. And so that plus his writings, uh, Return to the Source, Unity and Struggle, all the rest, brilliant, brilliant philosopher warrior. Imhotep, I think a lot of you have heard of Imhotep from ancient Kemet. Uh, one thing that I always impress upon the youngsters is if you go to medical school anywhere yeah. pretty much yep. in the world and you do your Hippocratic Oath and you talk about Asclepius, which is just basically Imhotep, you know how the right. Greeks always took, put their names on things. So to allow black children to understand that if, you, if you're wondering whether or not you can be a doctor, right. this is the first doctor right, right here well, before all of the rest of them. This is the father of medicine. So that's interesting for them, and I tell them about the building of the step pyramids and, and astronomy and poetry and all the other things. The world's first known multi-genius. Toussaint L'Overture, Haitian Revolution. Uh, I think a lot of people here know that. Is my man here is from Haiti, but we always have to, to uh, pay homage to, 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 to Toussaint because if you think of the enormity of that victory, yes. You know, I mean, we're talking Napoleon's army, we're talking the British, all of these people. And that was the money tree. That was the money tree for France. I mean, that was the, the richest colony in the world at the time. And for the, everybody wanted it. For him to be able to organize his people, Africans, to stop that. And, and of course, you know, he was betrayed and he left and decimated and coat took over. But still, they were able to do what no one else has done to date. And my man, that's why I tell people, I wish we could get that Haitian spirit. When they had the earthquake, I was saying, please, send them to Africa. <laughs> and help us clean things up, you know? That fighting spirit we have with the Haitians. This is Nakbewa. Nakbewa is uh, one of the main fathers of the northern northerners. Uh, Mamprusi, the, the Gombas, the, the, the Mosi up in Burkina Faso. But he's the father of a lot of the big northern groups. My wife is... Uh, 
is a northerner. She's a fra fra, so you know, all of them come through his line. He's buried in Pusagap near Baku. I've been up there to visit the grave, so he's probably the most impactful northerner in, so I have a question. in Ghana and Burkina Faso. So it looks like in Ghana, all the different sects are living together very harmoniously, including across um, religious lines. Was that um, Kwame's doing, or it was something that was happening before? Well, you know, I think, I think you know, Africans have always lived together, okay. We've always learned how to, you know, just like yeah. any other groups, we fight back and forth. But I wouldn't say that we're more harmonious now than, say, in the past. Okay. You know, I mean, you're basically, you're stuck inside of this enclosure called Ghana or Togo or whatever. So, you know, you have to manage one way or another. But, but it's, we've got, it's not very conducive to... We've got some places power. where they're killing each other along sect lines. Or they've well, we, killed each other along yeah. sect lines. Yeah, we have that. that okay. You know, and, and there's actually still some of that going on in Ghana. There's places in the north and you know, and every now and then they'll kill this one and, they, and the, the people, and the Kusasis and the and the uh, Mamprusis are fighting and Baku, you know, killing back. So this goes on, you know. It's like the Basque are killing people in other parts of Spain, you know. It's nothing it's nothing African about it. Jose Tutu, um, now it's hard to do Jose Tutu without doing a Confa Noche too, but um, the first is Santahini, and I don't know if you all, you all, if you go to Kumasi, you get more about the uh, Asante Empire, you know, the golden stool, the ascending Confanoche, and all of the things that it represents. But uh, Ose Tutu, first Asantehini. In fact, the current Asantehini, I think, is also Ose Tutu, the second or something, you know, they take these names and repeat.